I'm Chip Foos, and today on the C28 project, I'm gonna replace that wore out wood in the bed. I just got back from the truck shop in Orange, where I just got a brand new wood kit, I've got the new metal strips, and I've got a bolt kit. We're gonna pull that out, we're gonna measure for the holes that have to be drilled for the wood, then we can stain that, we'll get the strips powder coated, and then we'll start assembling. So I've set the wood in the bed and I've taken notice of what I need to trim. I know that both of these rear corner pieces, I've got to cut that out. So I'll measure that, mark it. I'll go ahead and cut the wood. Now on the two outside pieces that the bolts go through, what I did is I took one of the new metal strips and I set that in here to see where all of the holes that bolt through line up on that strip. So three of them actually have holes. One of them does not have that hole, so I've marked it. I'm going to go ahead and set that over the wood, mark where those will be, which I can do outside here now. Now, if you notice the washer that holds each of the bolts that hold the bed down, it's got a hole that's off center. It's 3 16 of an inch off center of the washer itself. So when I marked all the holes in the wood, I went ahead and put two indications there. One that's directly in line back 3 16 of an inch. One is for the bolt and one is the center of the washer itself. Then I'll take a wood drill and I'll go ahead and drill that down so the washer will sit flush. And then the bolt going through, We'll go all the way through to where we're gonna bolt the bed down, and that little offset will keep the bolt from spinning when we tighten it up from the bottom. Well, I went ahead and drilled both of those holes the first one going all the way through, the second one just a pilot hole, so it'll take the drill bit. Now I'm gonna drill this down so it's just the depth of the washer. The drill that I went all the way through with, you'll still see it, and I'll run the 3 8 drill through that so I can put the bolt all the way through. The big hole has been drilled for the washer. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab a 3 8 drill bit and drill for the bolt itself. Now on the two back corner pieces, I actually have to notch that for the stake bed pocket. So I've indicated both of those. I'm gonna go ahead and cut those. Then we start playing with some color on this wood. Okay, I've got all my holes drilled and I've got my corners cut. I'm gonna take a piece of 320 sandpaper and I'm gonna sand off all the pencil lines that I put on there. Then we can get to business. All right, looks like I've got all my lines erased off of the wood. We're ready to start adding some color, but now is where you're gonna think I'm a little bit crazy because I'm putting a brand new wood kit in the bed, but I don't want it to look brand new. I'm gonna actually distress this a little bit. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a chain and kind of beat on it in a few places. I don't wanna make it look wore out, but I'm gonna hit it in a few places so it looks like the wood's been damaged over the years. One of the things I did is I added a few bolts into the chain 
So when I hit it, it'll actually indicate almost as if some part had fallen on the wood. Start light, see what it looks like. And I'm gonna do it mostly at the back where if I'm dropping parts in just inside the tailgate. Get into the corners here. I thought my pencil marks were bad. Well, I like that. Let's start putting some color on it. For this project, I'm making my own stain. I've put a little acetone in the bucket and I'm using some black automotive paint to make an ebony stain. It won't take much of the paint. I'll mix that. Makes a very translucent black color that I'll use a rag and wipe it onto the wood. Now I'm using a rag to put this on. If I were to use a brush, I'd be making a mess. The rag will hold the paint or the stain and the wood will absorb it. If I were to use an oil-based stain, it takes about eight to 24 hours to dry before you could put a surface coat on it. And one of the things I like to do is I use an oil over the top rather than putting a clear on. When you clear the wood, you have to keep it perfectly cleared and you can't get any breaks in that clear because if the wood starts to absorb any moisture, that clear will start peeling off. And rather than just adding more, more oil to the wood when it starts to look dry, you actually have to pull the wood out and resurface it again. So by using just an oil, it's gonna last a lot longer. All right, the back is all done. I'm gonna flip these over. We'll do the tops. Now the fun part is, everywhere I hit the wood with the chain, the black is gonna absorb into that and it's gonna stay real dark in that hole. Because I used acetone and automotive paint, that stain's already dry. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a fine sandpaper and with the DA, I'm gonna sand the top of this real light. The little areas that I hit with a chain will stay down low, it'll stay dark. Then I'll give it another coat and those areas will get darker. It should look a little bit older. Okay, I've got all that sanded. I wanna actually, uh, I'm gonna fix a couple things. And then I've got another color that I wanna try on one of the little blocks. If I like it, I might go over all of this that way, or I might just give this a second coat. Well, I had a second color that I was thinking of adding to this. I tried it on the little block first. I was thinking it might be cool if it was kind of a orange and black, which is the rest of the uh, detail colors of the truck, but I think it's gonna make it look too new and not as distressed. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add a second coat on top of this, and I think we're gonna be perfect. I've got a second coat of color on there. I'm gonna go ahead and sand that one more time. See if we need more color or just leave it the way it is. To me, this is just like creating a piece of artwork. Every piece of wood is its own piece of artwork. Well, I love what this is looking like right now, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one real thin layer of this ebony stain just to even the color up a little more over the boards. 
and then we can actually uh, put a sealer on that. So to finish the wood up, I've got some teak oil here. I like oil rather than an actual clear or varnish because if you actually get some penetration underneath the clear or varnish, it'll actually start to lift off the wood and you'll have to finish it. The teak oil, I can just come back and re-oil the wood anytime in the bed. I don't have to pull it apart. So I'm putting the oil on real heavy here at first. I'm gonna let the wood just absorb it. After I get it all on, then I'm gonna come back with another rag and kind of dry it off so it looks nice. I put the oil on and it's actually getting sucked into the wood. But I've got a dry rag here and I'm actually gonna come around and kind of wipe it down a little bit. Let it dry, and I'll give it a few more coats. Well, I'm gonna let that sit. I'm gonna run the bed strips over to the powder coater and get those painted. Well, I came in this morning and gave a final coat of teak oil on the wood. I love the way that's looking. It's almost completely dry now. By the time we're ready to put it in, it should be dry. I went by the truck shop in Orange and I picked up a brand new, beautiful, all polished stainless steel bolt kit. And I went ahead and got this piece of wood, drilled a bunch of holes, and I've hammered all these bolts into the wood. And when you look at these beautiful polished bolts, even the washers are individually wrapped. I don't actually want that polished look. I'm gonna sandblast all these so that it has this almost a galvanized look of an original bolt, but I don't want it to actually rust with your galvanizing wheel. So I'm gonna sandblast all these. By the time I'm done with that, Josh should have the tailgate off. We'll be ready to pull the rest of the bed off and get to work. Yep. Thank you for your help. No problem. Well, Josh and I have gotten all of the wood out of the bed, and uh, I'm at a point right now where we could either put the new bed into this bed, but I think what I really want to do is I want to paint the inside of this because it's a lot worse than I really want it to be. It's going to be a lot harder to come back in and try and paint the bed after we put all the strips and the wood into it. So I think what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and just clean up the mess. I'm going to start detailing and cleaning up all the crossbars. We'll get those powder coated. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand the inside of the bed and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get that another coat of paint. Make it clean. I still wanna have it a little bit distressed, but we'll make it real nice and then I can distress it after we've got it all assembled and on the truck. Well, last you saw Josh and I, we had decided that the inside of the bed the paint didn't look good enough to put that wood kit in, so we had decided that we would go ahead and paint the inside of the bed. We got started on it, and... Unfortunately, there was a lot more rust than what we anticipated. Including the outside of the bed as well. Josh made me feel pretty bad that I was trying to save that patina, 
but he was right. As we looked at the outside of the truck, the surface rust was only gonna get worse, so we decided we went ahead and sanded all of that off, got it cleaned up, got it in some primer, and then baked it this morning. We're almost done sanding. We should be able to put it in the booth as soon as we finish all the detail sanding, and we'll get some color on tonight. One of the things I'll do on a undercut or a reverse radius is I'll just roll the sandpaper to make my block with that. I'll show you how I can control that inside that negative curve. Now the black primer has a little bit of gray primer on top of it, and that's called the guide coat. As I start to sand, if there's any low spots, the guide coat will stay down in there. And I'll either sand it until it's gone, or I can put a little bit of spot putty in there. But you see just that roll of sandpaper will follow the contour of that radius. The rest of the bed I did with a Festool and a DA sander. All those flat panels will stay real clean that way, but the reverse negative I want to use this type of a block. I just have a little bit of sanding to do before we can get the bed into the booth, but since this is my daily driver, I had to order another car, which you just saw showed up. And uh, I'm gonna put this on hold and I'm gonna go drive my car. See ya. Well, this is a 67 Camaro rear bumper that I want to use on the truck. But as you can see, it's way too narrow. So I've taken a few dimensions and I've found out that I need to extend this 14 and a half inches. So I've got two bumpers here that I've already de-chromed. I've marked 14 and a half inches of one. I'm going to cut that out of the center, split the second one, add it to both sides of that. I'll have the width that I need. Then I've got to build the brackets and I'll have 67 Camaro bumpers on a 67 pickup. Well, we have got the bed painted and we are ready to install the new wood kit. But before we actually start to assemble this, I wanna put the bed back into the booth and we're gonna black out the inner fenders and also the wheel tubs. So when we assemble it, we don't have to black them out after it's all assembled. Josh and I have got the bed all taped up, ready to use. We've got 3M professional grade rubberized undercoating. Got to shake this up real well, and then I'm going to go ahead and get that on. Then we can get it back out and get the wood put in. That's dry already. We're going to get this out and start installing the wood now. Well, Josh and I have made the bed, or I should say that we have got the bed all assembled now. And, you know, originally we weren't gonna paint the truck, but as I started to put the bed kit in, I didn't like the way the inside of the bed was. I was gonna repaint that. As I got into it, I discovered that the little bit of surface rust that we could see was a lot worse than I thought. And all rust starts with surface rust. So as I got into it, I decided, you know, I wanna fix this now before it takes over and destroys the truck. The truck is in such great shape, it was easy just to scuff that. We painted it like a stock truck. I didn't want to make it look like a custom paint job. I want it to look like an original truck. Not going to be patinaed anymore. This is going to look like Chevrolet built the C28 in 1967, and it still survives today. <laughs>